Hello dear students of class 5. Welcome back. Today we are going to begin a new chapter and for that you, have, you can refer to page number 91. Page number 91 and the topic for the day is the story that we have is a school with a difference and it is written by none other than Edward Verrill Lucas and the author here we have is Edward Verrill Lucas. Let us know about the author. Edward, Edward Verrill Lucas was born in 1868 and died in 1938 and he was an English essayist, playwright, biographer, publisher, poet, novelist as well as editor. Some of his famous writings that we have that includes in his works that are The Face on the Wall, A Book of Verse for the Children, A Little of Everything and the story that we are going to deal today that is A School with a Difference is also one of the work of Edward Verrill Lucas. So this is a, I will not give a detail but just a jest about the story that we are going to deal today. It is a story here, the narrator, the Edward itself is narrating the whole uh, incident that that is all about in this in this story. It's a school that is run by Miss Bim and it, we've, and it is said that the school is unique as compared to the other school. So it is our duty, it is a duty of our readers to know why the school is so different. It is said, a school with a difference. So, uh, being a reader, that is the students of class 5B, today you are going to, you have to know what is the story all about. What is so unique about the school that is run by Miss Pim. So without delay, let us start, let us read the story. Okay, for that you can refer to page number 91. A school with a difference. I heard, I had heard a great deal about Miss Bim's school, but not till last week did the chance came to visit it. Here the narrator itself is the author, that is Edward Verrill Lucas. So he also, he, the the narrator or the author was looking for the chance because he have heard so many things about Miss Bim school that was run by Miss Bim. So it was the chance that he got. Luckily this time he got the chance to visit that school. When I arrived at the school, there was no one inside except a girl of about 12. With her eyes covered with a bandage, as he entered inside the camp campus, he saw there were uh, there were no life i mean like there were no life or there were no people in and around but what he saw was a girl of age of 12 with her eye bandage she was being laid carefully between the flower beds by a little boy not more than 8 years old and someone was helping her to walk because her eyes were bandaged and the person or the other uh, helper who was helping the girl uh, who was helping the girl to walk in such situation was a boy of around age of eight years so she stopped and evidently asked who it was that had come in and, uh, and he seemed to be describing me to her so if we hear the word evidently is here we can use it see clearly without any doubt as I think she heard the footprint, uh, the footstep of the of the author or the narrator. Then she asks the boy, who or uh, she asks to describe the person who uh, who was next to them. So the boy was very successfully he described about the author or the narrator. Um, then they passed away. So they passed on. So after. 
When the boy described all the matter, they just walked away. And then let's see you. Miss Beam was all that I had expected. Middle-aged, kindly and understanding. So she was the, as he encountered when he met Miss Beam. What was that? He found that she was a middle age and she was very kind and very understanding type of lady. We talked idly for a little while and then I asked her some questions as to her teaching methods, which I had heard very, very simple. So say idly means they had not they were just talking without any importance. They, they don't have any uh, great topic to discuss, but just idly they were talking and he asked some question regarding her teaching methods and which I which he heard that it was simple so what she said let's let us know she said no more than I no more than is needed to help them to learn how to do things and those only of the simplest that that is spelling adding subtracting multiplying writing the rest is done by reading to them and by interesting talk during which they have to sit still and keep their hands quiet. Practically there are no other lessons at all. So as the, as the author or the narrator asks about the special method of teaching in Miss Wim school, what she replied is that there is nothing as much. She said that we teach them spelling, how to, we teach them spelling, adding, subtracting, multiplying, writing and rest of the thing we do it is that we just read like uh, the rest of the teachers that they do in the school and sometimes they add some interesting talk in the subjects which they teach and and sometimes what to do and when there is, when there is a when is a particular time comes regarding the lesson to be taught the children are to sit quiet with their hands, like being a, without being any activities, okay? They have to listen. They have to just sit and listen attentively, okay? So there is no more other lesson, she said. There is no other method that they, she used. And to which, um, this one, the author added, I have heard so much, I said, about the originality of your system. So, is this the thing that you all teach in the school? Is this because of this this method the school has become famous? So I have heard so much of about this system, the school you that you run. The author is inquiring to the Miss Bim. So Miss Bim smiled. Ah yes, she said. I am coming to that. The real aim of this school is not too much to instill thought as thoughtfulness, humanity, citizenship. So here the word instill is to inculcate or to put into, uh, you can say inculcate or to put into, uh, to put in some morals in someone, okay? To inculcate is to, instill is to inculcate, to put in, okay? So she said that this school is, is not so much to inculcate about the thought that is to be very thoughtfulness and to be a humanity and citizenship. We don't, we don't give so much emphasis on these things. But this is the ideal I have always had and happily there are the parents good enough to trust me to try and put into the practice looking out of the window. Okay. Uh, put into the practice. So look out of the window a minute, will you? She said. So she said that our school don't give so much emphasis to inculcate the thought of thoughtfulness, citizenship, as well as humanity. But somewhere we have some practices to which here to put into the practice is to employ or to use. Okay. Somewhere where we have added something in the school that we practice in the school in which the parents are very supportive. So in between without completing her this one speech, she I think she wanted to point out something. So she said, Look out of the window a minute, will you? 
she asks to the author. So the next, so I went to the window which overlooked a large garden and a playground at the back, as she called and in, in between the conversation, she wanted to show something. So she called the author or the narrator to come out and not come out, come near to the window and to look out. And as he went there, he saw the large garden and the playground at the back. What do you see? Miss Beam asked. So she inquired. After looking out the window, what do you see? She inquired. I see some very beautiful grounds. So he said, I can see a very beautiful grounds. I again he said, I said, and a lot of jolly children, but what perplexes me and pains me too is to notice that they are not all as healthy and active as I should wish. So as he went and he went, he uh, he looked out of the window. He saw a beautiful garden in which and there is a there was a large playground in which very active, jolly children were playing. But to his to, to his you know, the, the word perplexes means to to his confusion or to his puzzle, he can see some of the children are not active at all. They are not as able as the children. Like everybody, every every children, there are, there were few children who were left out, and for that we have to see the detail. What is there? And he and he and he feels sorry for those children who are not able, equally able to play in the on the playground. So, as I came in, I saw one poor little thing being led out, owing to some trouble with her eyes. And now I can see two more in the same plight, while there is girl with a crutch just under the window watching the others at play. Now he slowly, slowly the author started to observe, as in as in as before when he entered in the in, inside the Miss Bim's office, he saw one girl with a her eye band with a bandage, and there were more two children with a. I with that children with the with their eyes been bandaged, and he also saw uh, there was he also saw a girl with a crutch, and you already know what is crutch. Crutch is a stick. It's a long stick which is used as a support by a disabled people. Okay, so so these are the these are the these are the things that he observed in in um, among the joyful children. There were few children who are physically disabled or handicapped okay so this is these are the things that he observed here so then next miss pim laughed oh no she said she is not lame really this is only her lame day nor are those others blind it is only their blind day okay she said and when he, when the when the narrator started to like feel sorry for those children who were who were physically disabled then as, uh, all of a sudden miss bim said that oh no it's not true at all they were they, neither this the girls are blind nor uh, nor not they are nor it's a lame it it is only their blind day and a lame day Okay, I must have looked very much at stories, for she laughed again. Obviously, it's not normal to her saying that somebody is having a blind day or lame day, isn't it? So, the narrator got astonished or he got shocked. There you have an important part of our system in the nut cell. Now, so slowly, slowly she is revealing of, revealing of, of her system. So she is saying, in order to get a real appreciation and understanding of misfortune into these young minds, we make them participate in misfortune too. The word here, appreciation, is uh, full of understanding of the situation. 
It is a full of understanding of a situation. So, now slowly we came to know that in the school that is run by Miss Bim is that normal children are asked to appreciate as well as to participate in such kinds of uh, days that are such as the such as a lame day and blind days okay so we at least in this first part of this story we came to know that here the school that is run by miss bim here the system is slightly different because the normal children are asked here see in order to get the real appreciation and understanding of the misfortune into these young minds we make them to participate in misfortune so here the school why it is said that huh? a school with a difference is said why it is said because there's a slight this is in the system what is there is there's a slight change that is the normal children are asked to practice in practice and to appreciate the misfortune of the uh, understand as well as to practice and to understand as to appreciate the misfortune or misfortune that that are experienced by the physically disabled people so this is what we have learned the remaining we are going to Read in the next video. Till then, take care. Thank you.